Good morning and welcome to our online service. No matter where you are, where you're from, or where you've been, we're glad you're with us today. Join us as we worship God and look to Him through His Word. We pray that you are blessed by this ministry. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, just a quick announcement. We are unable to live stream the service currently, but we are recording the service to upload it later. So you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, this wasn't live streamed, I apologize. Uh, we apologize, we, we ran into some technical issues. Um, but uh, we will be recording the service to, to upload later. So, um, yeah, just to let you know. Shall we stand as we pray and as we worship our God together? Thank you. Sister Ida, would you like to pray for us as we start the service? Thank you. to us dear Jesus that it may benefit us it may uplift us and it will encourage us bless each and every one of us here dear God meet our needs dear Jesus and whatever yes. you decide to do in our lives we are looking forward to it in Jesus name amen 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 shall we sing that song together I stand in awe of your beauty together and let's praise him not just with our words but with our whole being yes God we praise you this morning 
Shall we lift our voice and praise him this morning? Yes, God, we praise you. We worship you, Jesus, for you are lifted high. You alone are worthy, God. You alone are holy. You alone are worthy to be praised, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we sing that together? Mighty to save, Savior. My Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Let's sing that together. Everyone needs compassion. Everyone needs compassion. Love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior, the hope of nations. Sing it together, savior. Sing. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ is alone. I believe, I believe in you. Oh, I believe you rose again. I believe that Jesus I believe in God our Father. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again.
bow my knee and worship you alone. All heaven declares. All heaven declares. The glory of the risen Lord. Who
Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. One more time. He is Lord. He is Lord Jesus. He has risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every to you, God. Bow our hearts to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit move amongst us, dear God. And dear Jesus, the word that we are going to hear today, dear God, that it may live in our life, dear God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Church. That was that was great. I feel like you led me into worship there. That was awesome. It's such a privilege to worship God together. Um, this morning, uh, we have our uh, brother Doug, who's going to be bringing the word for us uh, this morning. So shall we welcome him 
as he comes forward and brings the word. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. So, yeah, please do keep your Bibles and your notepads and everything ready as we listen to the word together. Is it possible to dim some of these? I know it looks like a stage and I'm not on a stage. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I always think when the lights are on like that, it's a stage and I haven't come to perform. <laughs> Amen. I was asked to speak, and I. It's so difficult sometimes to know what to speak on, because I know we've been speaking on great men of the Bible. And uh, Emmanuel said, Can you pick a great man of the Bible? And I thought to myself, No, I can't. Because they're all great. <laughs> That's why they're there. They're all great. And so what I looked at was. How does a righteous God deal with an unrighteous nation? Oof. And as I began to as I began to look at it, uh, I'm afraid I got rather sidetracked. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to I'm going to start and go through what I've what I've prepared. But it almost seems as though God was guiding me in a different direction because I had no I had no reason. All of a sudden, I turned the page, and there it was. Oh, yeah. There it was. So, there's going to be a lot of reading this morning, because God's word is better than my word. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, then. Let's just uh, have, a, ha, have, a, have a look at God's word, then, shall we? God made uh, many, many uh, promises in his word. But the one thing which always remained was the covenant that he made with, with Abraham. So I just want to have a, a quick look through, and it's going to be a very, very quick look through as, as we go through, because most of the, the incidents of Abraham's life and the life of Joseph, you already know them. So I'm not going to go through them all again. You already know them. So I just want to have a, a, quick, a quick survey. And I'm looking at Genesis chapter 6. And... And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bade children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imaginable imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man with whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. In other words, he's sorry. We never think of God as being sorry, do we? We always think of God always knowing what's happening. But obviously he does know what's happening. But it didn't work out the way he had hoped with Adam. Adam and Eve were the first downfall. And then we come to Noah. Then we, we come to Noah. And it says, But Noah, hallelujah, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I'm glad we serve a gracious God. 
Amen. Doesn't matter what else happens, he's gracious to us. Hallelujah. And and now found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. Hallelujah. Hey, to walk with God, what a privilege we have in that we were able to walk with God. And the earth is filled. You know that we always sing a sing a song, don't we? The animals went in two by two into the ark. Do you remember this in one songs? Hey? No? Nobody remembers? Oh, some of us do. But they got the song wrong, you see, because they didn't all go in two by two. Some went in by sevens. Did, did you know that? Some went in by sevens. All the, all the birds of the air went in by sevens. All the clean beasts, it's about to be went in by sevens. So that they could multiply the earth after it was gone, after it was abandoned. So the whole the whole earth was destroyed, and then Noah was was on Mount Ararat, out they came, and the whole world spoke one language. I'm really going quick here. They all spoke one language as they multiplied and God had to had, had to move them around because they thought that they could build a tower up to heaven and God gave confusion to them so that they wouldn't be able to reach to heaven. And so we find then that God began to move the people around the earth and they all had a different language. But I want us to look at at what happened in uh, in chapter 12 of Genesis. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Abraham was found to be a righteous man, so God had pulled him away from where he was to give him a land that he was going to show him. And this was God's peculiar people. Hallelujah. God's peculiar people. Chapter 15. This is a one which I've never really cottoned on to before. Chapter 15, verses 13. And it says, And when the, chapter 12, And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Now Abraham was told, here we go, he was told, that they were going to go into Egypt as slaves. What a thing to tell someone who you've just said, I'll make you a great nation. Eh? But I'm also going to make you captive. Eh? Amazing how God works. Uh, it's, it's true what they say, you know, God's, God's ways are not our ways. We, we wouldn't even think of that. We wouldn't even think of that. God's ways are not our ways. And, so, and then, so let's go to chapter 37. It's, it's very, very quickly this morning. I, uh, chapter 37, and Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. And these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Balaam and with the sons of Zephyr. His father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. 
Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was born of his old age and made him a coat of many colors. Now we know the story of the coat of many colors. We know that he was thrown into a pit. We know he was taken abroad. And we know he ended up in Egypt. And we know he became a great man. God had already told Abraham what was going to happen to his people. And yet when Joseph went, Abraham did not remember. Because he'd lost his son. God works in ways we cannot always understand. And so we find then that Joseph was able to save Israel. Why? Because he provided for them in Egypt. You know, it's a well-known phrase, there's corn in Egypt. Anybody ever use that phrase? No? See, all these things are dying out because we're not using the scripture. They're all, they're all fading away. We used to say, oh, there's corn in Egypt when there was bountiful. Because that's what it was. It was a bountiful country at the time. There's always corn in Egypt. There's always plenty because God had provided. And so we find then that God was keeping his people safe. But then we know that they became slaves. Exodus chapter 2. I thought it was going to be quick. But I think, the word, I think sometimes reading the word of God and get, getting the story together helps. And there was a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw that he was goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not hide him any longer, she took him in an ark and, bu and bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river bank. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself. And the river and her maidens walked along the riverside. And when they saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maids to fetch it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Now, you know, all the male children should have been killed. If you, read the, if, if you read the earlier earlier chapter, they should all have been killed, but God had given them midwives wisdom so that they weren't. See, it's, you know, it's just, just amazing the way God works, isn't it? Just amazing the way God works. And we find then that this is the start of their release. Amen? It wasn't going to be quick. It was coming from a babe, so he had to grow, he had to mature. He had, to become, he had to become older. And so as we go to chapter 12 in Exodus, we find then that he's, he's on the move. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you, speaking unto the congregation, the household, and to a little lamb. And so we find that this is the... This is, and, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, which is verse 8, and roast with fire and leavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at, at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the furniture thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall you eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now here were a people who had been persecuted. And here was God telling them to, okay, get yourselves ready, you're on the move. Hey? And they obeyed. They got themselves ready. They got the shoes on their feet. They got the staff. They got everything ready and prepared and did as God said. And then we find, and I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the goods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood... I will pass over you, 
and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. You know, the blood still works even today. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus Christ still cleanses us. It saves us from the wrath of God. Hallelujah. As we return to Christ. And so we see what is happening there. So Moses then moved on. And we find that as the people went, they didn't go very far. Exodus chapter 32 and 33. Thirty-two, And when Moses had gone up into, into the mountain, and because Moses had disappeared for a bit, you know, it's like someone saying, oh, the pastor's gone on holiday. <laughs> so we won't bother going to church. <laughs> no. <laughs> but some people have that kind of attitude. But that's not the attitude we have. We, we come to serve God, not to serve the pastor. No disrespect to the pastors, but we don't serve the pastors. We serve God. Hallelujah. And, and, and the people, Moses had gone. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods that we shall go before us. For as far as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which ye are on your ears, and your wives, and your sons, and your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graven tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be the gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamations and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. That's a strange thing to do. And they rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down for thy people which thou brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a, mol a molten calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed thereunto. These be the, the, the gods of Israel which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore... Let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them and I will make thee a great nation. Was God changing his mind? No. He was offering Moses a, a promotion. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Now, it's almost like, it's almost like a family, you know. When a child is naughty, it's either the wife's son or it's the father's son. Yeah? Yeah? That's the one, you're, you're your mother's son or you're your father's son. God almost said the same to Moses. You've brought them out of Egypt. Of course Moses hadn't brought them out of Egypt. Moses couldn't bring them out of Egypt. God had brought them out. So Moses was kindly reminding, reminding the Lord. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does thou wax which thou hast brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. And remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, 
and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mountain. Now, it's a very strange chapter, this. Uh, so I, I want us just to take a bit of time and read it. And the Lord repented of the evil, and Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tablets of the testimony were in his hands. The tablets were written on both their sides, on the one side and on the other were they written, and the tablets were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tablets. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout from mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, and he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tablets out of his hands and brake them beneath the mountain. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strewed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did the people, what did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest this people that they are set on mischief. He's blaming the people now. They, instead of blaming himself for not standing up, he's blaming the people. But he said unto me, Make us gods which we go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we know not where he is. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me, and then I cast it into the fire. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let them come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from the gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. God does not like other people receiving his glory. But why does he do it? Why is harsh? Because it's like a, his children are, the children of Israel are like children. They need to be directed. They need to be punished. As a child, if a child is doing wrong, he's punished. Yes? I'm not going to kill him, but He's punished. We punish children. We want them to grow up to do what is right. We never have to teach a child to do what is wrong. Never. They instinctively know how to do wrong because it's inbred. Because we are. Until we're saved, we're children of Satan. It's true. And so God has to show his, his power among his people. And then we go, we go a little bit further and we find that the people promise then to keep God's commandments. Now I was going to go very quickly because nearly all the rest of the Old Testament is concerned with them going backwards and forwards, following after God, leaving God, God bringing them back, God taking them into different countries and different lands, that God might bring them. He wanted a people for himself. When he took them into the land of Canaan, he told them to get rid of all the nations that were there. Why? Because they worshipped idols. Because he knew that his people would so easily follow them. And so they wanted 
He wanted him to clean out the land of everything that was idolatry. But I want us to just turn to, uh, to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. But now, saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, that he formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Hallelujah. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the, fl the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Saviour. I gave Egypt for a ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, Thou hast been honourable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather them from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all nations be gathered together. Let all let the people be assembled who among them can declare this and show us former things. Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is true. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God, for neither was there, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Saviour. I have declared, I have saved, I have showed, when there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon, Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King, saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horses and the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as, as a candle wick. Remember ye not for the former things, neither consider things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now I, will, I shall spring forth... Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give water to the wilderness and rivers in the desert to, to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself, and they shall show forth my praise. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. See, God had done all this. And yet Jacob, or Israel, was still not calling on the Lord. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. But thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the, little, the small cattle for thy burnt offerings. Neither hast thou honoured me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Thou hast brought me no sweet came with money. Neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. What a promise. Eh? What a promise. I have blotted out all your transgressions. Not for your sakes, but for his sake. For mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. 
Put me in your remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Thy first father hath sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore, I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, and have given Jacob to the curse, and Israel to reproach. God still wants his people. He still wants that that people that he's chosen. He still wants them to serve him. No matter where he is or where he's going, he still wants them there. And then we go on to chapter 44, and it says, Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jerusalem, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine, off thine offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grasses, willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the, by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And who, as I shall call, and shall declare it, and set it in order, for me since I appointed the, the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not, have not I told thee from the time and have declared it, ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. See, this, this generation, this multi-faith generation, there is still only one way to Jesus Christ. There is still only one way to God, and that is through the forgiveness and the repentance of sin. And then the next few verses uh, of 44 shows how stupid it is to make idols. Because they can't speak, they can't move, they can't see, they can't hear. So I pray to them. There's no reason. Verse 21 says this, Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant, I have formed thee, thou art my servant, O Israel, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. Hallelujah. See, God has promised never to forgive, never to forget them. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by, thy, by myself, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, and turneth wise men backward, and maketh the knowledge foolish, that confirmeth the word of his servant, and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and the cities of Judah ye shall be built, and I will raise up the, de the decayed places thereof, that said into the deep, be dry, and I will dry up the rivers. That saith to Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and shall perform all the pleasures, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built. So even here we're seeing that God is already fore foretelling of Cyrus becoming the great king who's going to help the children of Israel to rebuild. What a God we serve. I I've run out of time. What a God we serve, though. Hey, eh? What a God we serve. He is in charge of everything. He is in charge of nations. He is in charge of people. Uh, he is in charge of the world. And sometimes we forget that. You know, this, uh, this eco-warrior thing, this, uh, this business about our planet, the fires, the floods, is it another sign of a closer return of our Lord and Saviour?
because he said I will create a new heaven and a new earth. Hallelujah. I'm waiting for that day. Amen. I'm waiting for that day when we shall be in a new heaven and a new earth. No more pain, no more suffering, no more death, no more sorrow. Hallelujah. And we have that through Christ Jesus because he died on the cross of Calvary for us. Because he rose again on the third day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he rose, we too can live also. But I just, I, 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 I just plead with you to read Isaiah because there's great force of the greatness of God there and how he uses the nations and how sometimes we think that God is, is cruel. Sometimes we think that God is he, he, he's, he's not caring. But he's always cared for his people. He's always loved his people. And he wants his people to know him. I'm just going to read a, a small passage from, uh, from the New Testament. John 3, verses 16, verse 16 and 17 and 18. For it says this. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave it there. All right. God loves us. He loves us. He loves people. He loves nations. But they need to turn to him. They need to... They need, there's a sense... I have a feeling and a sense sometimes that the preaching of repentance is almost null and void. But if we don't repent, we cannot follow Christ. If the nation's not... Our nation is drifting so far away from the word of God... I'm not surprised that we've got what we've got. And nations of the world. Are you? Some people say, oh, God wouldn't use that. Who am I to question God what he uses? Who are you to question God what he uses? We, we are in strange times. We are in very strange times. And I believe that our God will keep his promise, that he will return, hallelujah, one day. And that day is fast approaching. The New Testament said it is not long. It's nearly 2,000 years. In fact, it's 2,021. How long is God going to wait? How long is he going to be gracious to us? before he returns how long have we got to tell others about him that they too might learn him learn him as the Lord and Saviour let's pray Amen. our loving eternal father this morning I just want to thank you for your greatness I just want to thank you Lord because you are in control of all nations even though they think they know best Yet, Lord, you are in control of all of them. A word from you, Lord, can diminish a nation into nothing. And so, Lord, as we give you our praise and our, and our glory, because there is none worthy except you, pray, Lord, that you will help us, Lord, to, to just realize the greatness of our God. And, Lord, that we might be able to tell others about the love of Jesus. Not only is it the love of Jesus, but it's the love of God. Because he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Oh, Father, help us to share that love with those around us, with our neighbors, our friends, that they too might see Jesus, him crucified, and they might turn their lives around and turn towards him who is able to save. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.